This story of a Nigerian Christian woman who was arrested in church and now faces seven years in prison over a Facebook review shows how freedom of speech is all but dead. Not just in Nigeria, but here in America too. Now let's turn to Nigeria where a tomato puree review has landed a woman in jail. I'm not making this up. A woman put up a Facebook post. She complained about a tomato mix. She said it was too sweet and the Nigerian police decided to arrest her. She now faces multiple cases, up to seven years in jail and a fine of five billion naira. That's about three million US dollars. So three million dollars and seven years in jail, all for a bad review of tomato mix. How is this kind of puree persecution possible? The alleged crime took place last September, on September 17th. That's when our reviewer put up her Facebook post. Her name is Chioma Okoli. She is 39 years old, a mother of three, and presently expecting her fourth child. On September 16th, a day before she put up the post, she went and bought the tomato mix. Her usual brands were out of stock, so she decided to try a different one. Before using the puree, she decided to taste it, and clearly she was not a fan. So she took to Facebook to air her grievances. She claimed the puree was too sweet, that there was too much sugar in it. And she asked her Facebook followers for their opinion. Now this set off a furious online debate, apparently with a puree maker's relative or at least an ardent fan, someone calling themselves Blessing. Now Blessing began the accursed chain of retribution. They told our reviewer not to bring her problems on social media and she should call customer service instead or just choose a different tomato mix brand. So our reviewer shot back. She told Blessing that the sauce was pure sugar and that it was killing people. Well, seven days later, our reviewer was arrested. Apparently, the Nigerian police think she was part of a criminal conspiracy. I'm serious. This is what she has been charged with. Plotting to instigate people against the tomato mix maker. Not just that, she was charged with intentionally making false claims online, an offence under Nigeria's Cyber Crime Prohibition Act. She faces seven years in prison in this conspiracy case and three years and a fine on the false information charge. But this is not even the worst part. Her arrest itself was horrifying. She says she was picked up from a church by officers in plain clothes. She was put in a holding cell without a place to sit and a leaky roof. She spent the night awake. The next day, she was flown out of the city, taken from Lagos to Nigeria's capital, Abuja. Have you ever heard of something like this? Someone being transferred to another city over a Facebook post about tomato puree. Interestingly, the company that conspired with the police to harass the Christian lady alleged she made false claims that their product was harming people. Did she lie? I did a little bit of digging just to show you was she lying? Did she make um, a false claim or is this woman just being silenced? So let's go to the horse's mouth. This is um, NIH. Evidence demonstrate that excess sugar consumption can lead to the development of cancer. So was this lady lying that the sugar is killing people? I don't think she lied. But let's get a little bit further. So I looked up this. Um, I looked up the this particular tomato paste or this particular product, as you can see here on this uh, tw uh, Twitter post. What do we see here? Sugar, okay, has some other ingredient that I don't even understand. So I, I looked it up a little bit, especially this E129 and E330, just to give you an idea. So this lady was actually sharing a legitimate concern that has got into trouble, but. This is what the research is showing, not me. Again, what does it say here? Tooth erosion, stomach issues, skin erosion, uh, skin irritation, excuse me, and some kind of allergy. So these are possible causes of the ingredient that in this particular uh, product. What else do we know? So they put all this color in the, um, I think, E129. What does it say? Research has found a possible link between certain artificial um, colors used in food and program with hyperactivity in children. So it's not only adult, but children are suffering uh, from this type of product. So ultimately, this lady 
didn't make any false claims. Meanwhile, Nigerian courts have started hearing the case, and there's no guarantee that the courts will throw it out. We pray God vindicates her from those who seek to silence and destroy her life and livelihood. Corrupt corporations use corrupt government to oppress and silence people. This was the same fate this young Christian faced in the United States. What did he do wrong? He read the Bible at a pride gathering. They say we can have. We can, they say we can speak out here on the sidewalk freely. You can speak, but there's no way we can fight. Nobody told us that. What are you doing? Nobody told me. How come there's no amplification? Hey, you guys are acting like thugs, man. You're acting like th- straight up thugs. Hey, you're 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 taking away my. He has every right to be out here engaging in speech. He has every right to be out here engaging in speech. This Christian man was arrested for preaching the gospel in a public space. He neither harassed nor hurt anyone. All I said was, I was going to say God is not the author of confusion. And as soon as I said God, he was on me. But I I just showed up. So, and I didn't come here to throw my, the sign says, Jesus says, go and sin no more. This Canadian pastor faced similar persecution for simply choosing to hold a church service to provide spiritual support for people who were hurting and desperately needed encouragement during the pandemic. Christians are not safe in Europe either. Many laws that are disguised as equity, diversity, and inclusion are now used to persecute and jail Christians. Finnish PM, a former minister, was charged for simply tweeting a Bible verse. On trial were Finnish lawmaker and former interior minister Paivi Rosinen. Also on trial was the Bible itself, and whether quoting the Bible is a hate crime. But when Paivi Rosinen challenged the church to do just that, she was charged with a crime. Then I, I wrote a Twitter post and I took a photo from the Bible, from, from Book of Romans. And after that, there became a public debate and some uh, citizen made a criminal complaint and police started to investigate that my Twitter posting. Persecution is always meant for evil, but God always means it for good. Christians in Asia are not left out in this global persecution at the hands of those who hate Jesus Christ and can't stand the gospel message. Downloading unauthorized versions of the Bible is now an offense in China. Internet users there have noticed that with other Christian books, the Bible is unavailable from online shopping websites. The Christian poor in the Shanxi province have been asked to take down the images of Jesus Christ, the crucifixes and rosary beads and instead replace them with the posters of President Xi Jinping. In the past months, dozens of Protestant churches have been raided and shut, sometimes violently, says Pastor Zhang Chunli. Even larger, government-approved churches have been ordered to reduce their visible presence by removing crosses. Jesus forewarned in Matthew 24 that shortly before his second coming, there would be persecution of those who believe in him. Revelation 13, verse 17, makes it clear that there will be an economic boycott for those who refuse to accept the mark of the beast. The time is at hand. We urge every Christian to draw closer to Jesus. As for those who do not have a personal relationship with Christ, the time is now to repent, call upon the name of the Lord, and be saved. Tomorrow is not promised. Please help us spread biblical truth. Subscribe, like, and share. God bless you.